everyone, Sandman here. So I started my fourth day on the road by driving from around Tucson to close to the Mexican border to a small town called Bisbee. It's got a huge copper mine in the town and feels like an Old West kind of place because of its isolation. You actually have to drive through a tunnel to get to it, and it's only a few miles away from Mexico. So I was down here to visit and hopefully interview the people that run the Shady Dell, which is a trailer park motel. You pay to stay in the trailers, and I filmed the grounds, but the owner disappeared, and I guess they didn't actually want to go on camera. But I was lucky enough to get the footage of this place anyways. It's a really cool but strange place because it's stuck between a cemetery on the east side and in a huge open pit copper mine to the west. And the place looks like it's frozen back in time in the 1950s. Even the owner's hair is slick like you would have seen back then. There are about 10 Airstream trailers on the property as well as buses, boats, and other eclectic things like an old payphone and diner. Some of the grass near the gazebo is actually AstroTurf and it has a retro and slightly mod feel to it. I would have loved to interview someone here but as I said I actually think I spooked them and they decided not to stick around. Either that or they went for coffee and I left before they got back. My idea for filming on the road is basically to give people what amounts to free publicity. I would typically shoot a 5-10 to 10 minute interview and you wouldn't believe how many people actually declined it. So after my slight disappointment I continued towards Tombstone, Arizona where I checked out part of the old town. Here's yet another town that probably would have been a complete ghost town if it hadn't been for the tales of the shootout at the OK Corral. And in case you're wondering, I'm not going to show you that because the so-called location of that shootout is owned by someone and they do paid tours. But overall the town does a good job at dressing people up like cowboys in costumes and selling tons of souvenirs. There are many shops, bars, restaurants, and places you can generally throw your money at. Again, I didn't find anyone to interview because the historian that everyone was pointing me towards wasn't actually in his shop, and he opens it whenever he feels like it. That's the kind of laid-back feel that I got from this place. You can tell that the locals live off of tourism, and everywhere you look, there's someone wanting to take you on a stagecoach ride, as well as sell you a cowboy hat or take you to the mine tours. Of all the so-called ghost towns I visited, this is the most commercialized, and I can tell you it's a cash cow based on the many restored blocks and stores. So after this, my next stop was to the Pima Air and Space Museum. Usually people come here to see the old Air Force One that LBJ and John F. Kennedy used to fly around on because they have them right here in the desert. But I wasn't there to see that specifically. I was more interested in six or seven aircraft that were painted by different graffiti artists. I've seen thousands of pieces of graffiti in my lifetime, but never have actually seen anyone paint graffiti on the side of an airplane. I still have to research the artist and get permission to put together a proper video with this particular footage. But I did get a contact number and I'm sure that they will say yes because I'm not interested in showcasing their entire airplane collection, and only these airplanes specifically. One day I'd like to see an artist or series of artists do graffiti paint on old trains. I think that would be really cool as well. So after I finished off here I headed back to Biosphere 2. I was there the day before but it closed at 4 o'clock, so today I was earlier because I didn't want to get locked out again. This is probably one of the most awesome buildings that I've ever seen in my entire life. When it was built in the late 80s and early 90s, they sealed it up and there were people living inside with no real physical contact with the outside world. Today, however, it's used by the University of Arizona as a place to do science and research. It's crazy to think that at one point the people that built this place wanted to change crews every couple of years for about a hundred years. The building was built to last a hundred years, believe it or not, and it contains a rainforest, a savanna, and even an ocean. Yes, this place has an ocean, then the corals even died out. Below it all, there's a vast number of machines to keep everything living. The building is massive and airtight and needs two lungs to deal with the pressure once the air in the greenhouse gets heated and expands. I was actually in the dome-shaped lungs and they actually look like something massive out of Doom 2, or some other multiplayer shooter game. This place was only used for four or five years for its intended purpose, but the science from those few years will be used for decades to come. After I finished shooting here, it was time to hit the road yet again because I had to make it all the way to Yuma for my hotel that particular night. I was also disappointed because I was hoping to get at least two out of four interviews and I didn't get any. The next day would be better for me because I was visiting the fifth ghost town, a tiny church, Salvation Mountain, as well as the International Banana Museum and an art installation in the middle of the desert. So join me for the next part, which is part five. Enjoy the rest of your day and cheers. Cheers.